For this first episode of the Studio Talk, we have the Ukrainian violinist Kostya Lukinyuk join us as our guest. Okay, so Kostya, thanks for joining our interview today. Uh, first of all, can you just tell us where you are right now? Right now, I'm in my hometown, Chernivtsi in Ukraine, in Western Ukraine, which is, uh, which is definitely one of the most safest areas here right now. It's really close to the Romanian border. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm staying here. Now. Good, good, so you're safe. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. I mean, the, the only reason, the only thing that is um, kind of, you know, concerning me and, and giving me a little bit of uh, worry is that, you know, honestly here there's, uh, everybody is like on edge and there's a lot of police in town and they can pretty much stop um guys you know males they can stop them for pretty much no reason and uh start you know asking questions and taking them to the recruitment center mm. and i was actually i was very close to being you know uh, taken to the recruitment center uh twice very close to 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 that but it was just a you know kind of luck you know and they, because some of my some of my uh, people that I know, the politicians from the town, they were there and they were they saw me being detained, so they came and rescued me. But, so were uh, they recruiting you guys to join the army to fight? Yeah, yeah, then pretty how, much. Yes. Then how did you get out of it? How can you even get exactly? Out of that's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. You know, it was just it was crazy because I was I was being detained by the police and uh, they took my documents and they were like, okay, you're you're coming with us now and. Uh, you know, this one politician that I know, she saw me there. So she saw me being detained and she, so she came up to them and she was like, you know, I'm a deputy here. And mm -hmm. this guy, you know, he's a legend. That's what she said. She was like, he's a, he's a legend here and uh, you guys can't take him. You know, I'm taking him. So she took me and uh, thank God I wasn't, wasn't detained because, you know, it would be, it would be horrible. Wow. Well, lucky to have someone on your back especially in this Definitely. kind of situation yeah cool exactly. so uh, exactly. can you tell us about your uh, uh music education background so we can know a little bit more about you uh yeah definitely so uh i started playing the violin when i was uh five years old and then i went to uh one of the you know children music school programs here and i was there for eight years nine years and after that, I went to a pre-college uh, program for four years. So, and I graduated that when I was 18. And as soon as I graduated, I, uh, I left uh, to the U.S. I went to the U.S. and I was studying. And I just actually, just recently, I graduated from Eastman School of Music with my bachelor's degree. Yeah. So, yeah. So you recently just graduated from Eastman. Yeah. What Eastman made you School decide it? Yeah. What do you what what made you decided to move back to ukraine i didn't really want to move back and i didn't really move back i came back because my visa expired since i uh, graduated mm -hmm. so i came back here to work on getting myself a new visa because uh, mm -hmm. i actually right before i left i uh, i went in and um, did a, did an audition to university of miami to frost school of music Mm -hmm. uh, for my master's degree and I, I think I did pretty well and from what I understand they want me there so I went back here to uh, go to the to an embassy and uh, get myself a new visa and uh, I came back to Ukraine on February 12th and uh, all of the you know war military action started on February 24th so I pretty much had like 12 days here mm -hmm. before everything uh, kind of blew up yeah. So you were supposed to start your master's in the fall this year. In August. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In, August. This year. in the fall. Yeah, in the fall this yeah. year. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you think you on a on a scholarship program? You got a scholarship. Yes. Yes. So I mean, I was promised that you know, if I'm if I'm if I'm accepted, uh, I was auditioning to uh, the studio of Professor uh, Charles Castleman. Mm -hmm. So he promised me that if I get accepted, all of his master's students get a full scholarship and get a stipend also. Yeah. So with that's, that's what's waiting for me. Yeah. 
with your situation, especially as a Ukrainian, I'm sure the school will definitely give you a scholarship. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm hoping so. You know, they 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 definitely were very interested in in me even before everything happened. So I'm mm. I'm really hoping that I can get there. You know, the, my problem right now is that the law that uh, they are not letting men out of the country, so I can't really cross the border for now. And uh, and the embassies here in Ukraine are closed. Obviously, all of the Americans have left a long time ago, so uh, there's really no way for me to get a visa here. So uh, right now, I'm looking into different options uh, mm. to uh, to get out. You know, I really need to get out to. Uh, Europe or somewhere like that, so I can work on my new visa. Okay. Yeah, but under a certain uh, the current situation, you probably it's really hard for you to get out of there. Yeah, it's pretty much impossible. You know, uh, first couple of days, first couple of days of war, I've heard about people who are like kind of sneaking out, you know, or paying somebody off. But now it's completely impossible because they cut off any. Uh, Mm. any of the any of the ways to get out for now you know and so i'm just looking into different exceptions because there are always exceptions and also i'm hoping that it's going to end somehow or the at least the law that is preventing us to leave is going to end you know even though the military action might still be going on maybe they'll start letting out some men so mm. i'm really hoping for that mm. yeah good luck yeah so um so we know you're, you're a classical train, especially in a conservatory like Eastman, uh, mm -hmm. but I see that you have actually quite extensive uh, repertoire. Can you just tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, thank you so much. I'm glad you noticed it. You know, yeah, obviously I've been trained uh, in the classical tradition since I was five years old. But when I was a teen, I was really um, sort of inspired by, uh, you know, That's people okay. like people like David Garrett, you know, and other musicians who are mm -hmm. playing the violin and playing different mm -hmm. styles of music on the violin. You so know, I've David been... Garrett and I went to school together. What? <laughs> oh, that's a joke, right? We were at Julia at the same time. Like, we were at the same year. Like, I don't, what? we don't know each other very, very well, but I mean, we were, we were really? apparently, we're, yeah, we're in the school at the same time. I'm not being honest myself. So yeah. we're at yeah. school oh, around the same time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh my God. That's crazy, man. Yeah. So, you know, I was really, I was a, a young boy, you know, like 14, 13, 14, 15, and I was really inspired. So I started, uh, you know, kind of trying out to uh, playing different pop tunes, you know, I would go out on the street and do my thing. And uh, obviously when I went to uh, study in New York, I, I, com I was completely fascinated by, you know, the people who who are able to improvise and um, you know by this by different styles and genres mm -hmm. like jazz you know funk uh, rock blues mm -hmm. and uh, and I've been trying and and you know uh, playing with different people with different bands you know different country bands you know jazz combos uh, funk bands you know stuff like that you know I've been learning a lot of different music I've been playing in gospel churches so I just, and I, I, I think, you know, violin is just such a universal instrument, mm -hmm. you know, it has so many different, uh, you know, emotional ways to, colors, yeah, yeah, emotional exactly colors. Colors, yeah, emotional, you know, and also like ways to attack the note and like, sort mm -hmm. of like develop the note. So it's just like, it's, it's perfect, you know, for literally anything. And so I kind of developed my own uh, style of, you know, playing different, types of music so for so now i pretty much can um, you know join anybody who is playing and that's that's my goal you know is to just play the music not just play what's in the music what's on mm -hmm. the paper because that for me that's sort of like a, a person who is just recreating something mm -hmm. but if you're playing you know music like whatever that there's no you're just creating it on the fly mm -hmm. improvising you know and for me that's that's the skill and that's you know people who can do that those people are real musicians they're not just recreators they're mm -hmm. like true musicians and they can play music that comes from their heart and create it on the fly for 
for the people, you know, because for me, everything changes every time I play, you know, even the song that I've played like a thousand times, it always is different because, you know, I'm different at that time, you know, I'm in a different mood, you know, I'm playing for different people. So it's just the ability to do that is, you know, always has always fascinated me. And I was, I always wanted to learn how to do it. And now, and still, you know, every day I'm learning new things and it's just, it's just endless, endless possibilities. Yeah, so I've seen that uh, actually on YouTube and your Facebook profile, uh, you've been collaborating with, I, I guess, some of your friends back in New York and back in the States. And how yes. did all these things started? Like in the past three, four weeks, it just, you know, generally, it just gets like snowballing, just getting bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. You mean like these concerts that I've been doing? The yeah. The amazing concerts? Yeah. Yes. Also playing yes. on the streets, open, in open public. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So, you know, since I'm back in my hometown, we have this open pedestrian street. Yeah. here it's it's very you know well known and you know there's a lot of people and especially now we have more people than ever before i've never seen this many people walking around because we have so many refugees mm -hmm. since our part of ukraine you know our mm -hmm. city is safe we have a lot of refugees from Kiev, from uh, eastern parts of ukraine so uh, me and my brother we've been you know just and I myself, you know, I feel responsible to go out there, you know, and share the music with those people because they have been affected by so many things that are just like so horrible. And I just want them to, you know, get distracted by something else, you know, just to distract them, you know, and present to them something to, you know, inspire them, you know, and just something that will take their mind off of that and just remind them of normalcy, you know, normal mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I've been doing that. And I've also been doing, you know, like these online events with, um, you know, people from Rochester, all of my friends that are just so amazing that have been helping me uh, with organizing different fundraising events. Mm -hmm. You know, they've been um, uh, inviting different bands there to play. You know, I also play there, you know, online kind of. And uh, these people are there for me. And it's just it's so heartwarming for me to to see those people because um you know the, the thing about this you know my philosophy about this is is um uh, that there are so many different fund organizations like funds uh, foundations you know so mm -hmm. many different foundations here that raise money for ukraine mm -hmm. but when you're like in your house and clicking the mouse, you know, and, uh, you know, just sending $50 somewhere to some nebulous organization, <laughs> you don't know where it's going to end up, you know, yes, you don't know exactly. when, you, and you don't know when it's actually going to impact somebody, mm -hmm. but you know, me, I want to present a different, just a different opportunity for those people, uh, people who know me and who are like, mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing how much support my country is getting, you know, they want to support us, you know, but I'm presenting them with an opportunity to go out to the places where I used to perform actually, mm -hmm. you know, and go out, uh, reminisce, you know, listen to some great music, uh, have fun. And, uh, and then, you know, donate this money and this money goes directly to me here where I'm on the ground and I see, you know, the issues that people are dealing with. And, uh, you know, I'm able to, you know, not even give the money to anybody, but mm -hmm. just, take it myself and go to the store, which we're doing. I was literally doing this today in the morning with my dad, uh, go to the store and buy the supplies that people need, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like backpacks, power banks, you know, sleeping mattresses, you know, uh, clothes, uh, laundry detergent, you know, stuff that people need. And, and also, you know, I'm about to get um, a bigger sum of money soon. Uh, transferred to me by Western Union and I was I'm going to be able to get cash and with that cash I'm going to be uh, I'm going to invest it into bulletproof vests mm -hmm. uh, because for, unfortunately there there is no way for us to get them here and mm -hmm. so there is a way for us to um, to get them from Turkey <laughs> so there are people who yes there are people who take the money take the cash they go to Turkey they buy those vests and then they come back with them here and that's actually one of the biggest biggest problems in here because there are people on the front lines 
that are you know in the active war zone and they don't have bulletproof vests so those people you know some of those people are just dying just because they don't have that thing on them you know the and, protection uh, yeah. me, that's just yeah, exactly and and for me it's just like so asinine and it's just like uh, i just want to do something about it you know and uh, you know there are these people uh, in in rochester you know and that, that is the thing you know there are all other organizations that want to do something like this you know foundations that raise a lot of money but they can't do anything with that money you know there's so much bureaucracy that they can't like send it to somebody you know that needs help right now or they, mm-hmm. there is just no way that yeah there's just no way for that money to like actually make an impact so that money is just sitting there mm-hmm. and i'm providing sort of like a different um opportunity for for the people you know to donate right away and i'm getting this money here myself mm-hmm. and we're able to sort of locally inject it into into the areas that need help right away wonderful okay. yeah okay so um on a lighter note uh i know that's <laughs> all a kind of a very serious and very important thing that that for us to know but um You've been playing a lot of Ukrainian folk music lately. And also on your uh, YouTube channel, you've been uh, doing a lot of this uh, uh, folk tunes with your brother. Um, yeah. can, I, I mean, I, I think it's great. So can you tell us a bit more about what's the characteristics of the Ukrainian music and why do you choose to play more of the music from your country, especially at this time? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you see, exactly, you know, it's just because of the times right now, um, me and my brother wanted to lift up the spirits of the people, especially people on the front lines, and uh, we decided to play, you know, some of these songs that we recorded were like uh, fighting folk songs, you know, that are just used, and, you know, people hear, they hear the melody, and they automatically, they know the words, so they understand mm-hmm. what we are doing. So it's just they understand the reference. And also we've been also playing a lot of different songs that are like not folk songs, but are just like, uh, you know, songs from Ukrainian musicians that everybody just knows that we grew, grew up with, you know, like bands like Okan Elze, you know, and other different musicians that are just, you know, we don't have like, you know, in America, you have like just so many different music. And here, you know, we have like, couple bands that are just like so popular that everybody just knows and everybody knows their songs and everybody knows the words and stuff like that and we're just trying to play those songs in a you know with with a little twist you know we're just playing them on two violins you know with a little twist to just give them a little bit more of a different flair but still people recognize those songs Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh yeah you know it's just it's just for the people you know i think it's right now there's such a you know there, people are so like um there's such a like new wave of patriotism you know and people who just want to support everything ukrainian and you know us ukrainians we see all the support that we get from other countries and we're just like so overwhelmed with it and we want to sort of you know we want to take more even more pride in whatever we have here you know so that is why we're choosing to play as many Ukrainian songs as we can. But also, you know, here we're also playing all of the, you know, all of the, you know, pop songs from <laughs> from U.S. and stuff like that because people just want to feel normal again. You know, mm-hmm. people want to feel like everything is, you know, fine and there's something to live for, you know, we're giving them that, you know, there's, there's something to live for, you know, and we are sort of presenting them like, oh, you know, like this is the future and in the future is everything's going to be fine and you guys will mm-hmm. go to concerts because we're getting these, you know, messages. I'm, I'm getting like comments on, on Instagram and stuff like that where, from people who are like, who just escaped, you know, they're like, we just escaped like Earth being, you know, which is like next to Kiev, which just got completely destroyed. We're like, they're like, we just got, we just escaped from there and we, we made it safely here. And this, this lady, she was like, I haven't listened to music since uh, February 24th Mm -hmm. at all. She's like, I haven't been able to even listen to music. And this was the first time I listened to music and enjoyed it again. So it's like, I feel so responsible 
to go out and present it to people and give them that opportunity to relax and feel normal again, you know, and, you know, there are other, other things that we're doing, you know, we're playing concerts for refugees here, like uh, official concerts for different refugee women, you know, and children, and we're playing concerts for different volunteers who are like, you know, they're volunteering and doing all of this, like all day, all day, all day, you know, and we're just trying to give them like, you know, an hour or two to just relax and just completely forget about this and think about something more than just, you know, like the routine and the negativity and think about something that, you know, yes, we are a country of amazing talents, you know, we have mm -hmm. great music and, you know, and when all of this is over, we're going to party hard, you know. <laughs> so. That's the New Yorker, you, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. So uh, I, I've recently been exposed to several uh, 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 Ukrainian folk songs, actually, uh, I, because, you know, I went to school with many friends in, in conservatory in the States. And I have a, a mm. pretty good friend. Uh, he's a opera singer from Ukraine, but he's, he, he's, he's, been, he, he's now in Berlin and they are mm. doing a, uh, a fundraising concert, I think, next week. So I've been uh, he's asking me to arrange a few pieces for him. And so mm. I've been like this past few days, I've been listening to uh, Hansia and the uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, Nichaka Misyachna. So, <laughs> <it's> actually, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I'm sure you know these pieces, right? <laughs> awesome, man. Yes, yeah. that's very, very cool. And the thing is, you know, these music at first, like it, it's so simple, but it just yeah. grows on you. It, it just keeps repeating, repeating, uh, and it's just like, uh, it's so many, so much joy to just to listen to it, and like I'd be like, I don't, I don't, I don't know Ukrainian, and, but you know, but when I was walking down the street every uh, all day, I would just have that kind of melodies in my mind all the time. <laughs> it's really yeah, catchy, yeah, and 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 that's why you know, like Ukrainian song is one of the biggest treasures that we have here. You know, like that's one of the biggest cultural. Uh, uh, you know, cultural things that we have here, you know, like one of the biggest, you know, we have Ukrainian food here. We have Ukrainian traditional clothing, uh, which is also amazing and very, very unique. And, and we have our songs, which mm. is like, which have been, you know, just kind of, it's like an oral tradition, you know, they've been like passed around through generations and generations. And, you know, obviously at some point there was somebody who composed it, but, you know, it's just, it, they've been passed around so much that they just became a folk song. Mm. Yeah. So um, uh, this is more of a serious question now. So what is the okay. ultimate message you want to convey to the rest of the world uh, with your music playing and your, any of the outlets that you can get your message out? So for me, my goal in life is to pretty much share my music with as many people as I possibly can, mm -hmm. because I know how music affects people personally. You know, music is, has been in my life since I was five years old. So I pretty much my whole life, I've been playing music. And, uh, you know, obviously in my life, there have been, you know, good moments and bad moments. And whenever... I have any sort of, you know, downfalls or turbulations or anything like that I'm, I'm going through. Uh, I've always, you know, came back to the violin, you know, and I always like kind of just would lock myself somewhere and just be with my instrument and pour out all my emotions mm -hmm. through it, you know, and especially now too, you know, like all of this stuff is so unexpected, you know, it changed everybody's plans, you know, but I have my violin still, you know, like mm. I always have it. And I always try to pour out all my emotions just through through that music, you know, through those melodies. And, uh, and for me, I understand that for me as a musician, I have to feel it like 200% so that everybody can feel it 100%. You know, I have to like feel every single note. And with that, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, I just know, the impact that music can make on people and how it can just change their day and subsequently their life pretty much 
you know, and everybody is listening to music. Uh, you know, there's not a person in the world who hasn't heard music at some point. And for me, I just want to always, always present it in the best way possible and always, you know, sort of, uh, you know, tell a story with it, you know, and show my soul to the people. That's why I'm always just so open with my music and I don't hide my emotions, you know, and some people don't like it, you know, it's not like everybody likes my music, you know, some people don't like it, but that's, that, that's just me, you know, that's just me as a person, you know, so I'm, I don't like to be like super reserved or anything like that, you know, I'm just showing you how I feel in a moment and uh, some people really, really resonate with it. So I'm grateful that I have, you know, an audience and that I have, you know, friends all over the world who like want to, you know, check up on me, you know, and, and listen to my music. And, uh, and honestly, like, I can't wait to be back in the US in Miami and uh, <laughs> study again, you know, and, uh, and, and perform as much as I can, you know, because there's so many opportunities for me to perform. I'm, I'm so grateful that I was able to study there. It's just, it opened up, like, it changed my life, obviously. So it's, I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to that. Yeah. You're very lucky because you're some of the uh, uh, a few of the very lucky people who can still uh, who's an artist who can still do what they love uh, with what they're good at. Because we know, I mean, uh, uh, I'm from Taiwan, but I'm I'm right now in Hong Kong. Uh, Patrick and I are in Hong Kong, mm. but we see on the news like so many uh, ballet dancers or many comedians mm. uh, or many be many artists. They are now uh, join the fight uh, and the actual yeah. fight in the war. And yeah. talking about artists, you know, your president Zelensky is also a, a comedian, also an yeah. art, artist. Yeah. But um, so, what do you think about him as your leader? And what if someday you get to meet him in person? What would you say to him, or what music would you like to play for him? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, Zelensky. A lot of people didn't like him at first here mm -hmm. a lot of people did like him but he was like sort of like a polarized figure uh but you know right now he's showing himself as uh, a good leader you know honestly and uh, he is everything that he's saying is um pretty much you know the, the only thing is like um the only thing is like you know a lot of people are talking about closing the sky and stuff like that and it's I understand that there, Russia is bombing us, but some people just don't understand what that means. You know, if if NATO is closing the sky, that means that they're they're joining the fight. And if they do join the fight, this might escalate into being mm -hmm. like a World War Three scenario. So that's one exactly. of the things that I don't I don't really agree with him on. You know, I I would love for this to stop. I would love for the bombings to stop, but I just don't want the escalation. Mm -hmm. But it seems like, you know, uh, you know, everybody thought that he would just like kind of, you know, fold up and, and leave in like a couple of days. That's what everybody expected him to do. And he didn't. So mm -hmm. that's awesome. You know, he's here and he's fighting for us. And um, yeah, as I said, you know, and also like. I, for me, you know, I think artists have to do their art. You know, I think there are people who are there you know there are people who can join the fight and who can bear arms people who you know didn't just dedicate their whole life to an art and art form and especially if they're good at it and especially if they have a platform it's a pity you know when i see you know i see sometimes on the news where like an actor has died you know or something like that i think it's it's really horrible. And I think he shouldn't be there or any artist, they shouldn't be on the front lines because these are the people who are, uh, you know, furthering the culture of Ukraine. These are the people who can, you know, speak to the world and, uh, you know, and inspire the world to know more about our country, you know? And if those people die, then uh, there will be no culture. And so that's why I'm here and we have our own front. We have our own cultural and artistic front that mm -hmm. we have to be on the front, forefront 
And we have to do all these things, you know, like, because there's so many people who can take up a, an, a, an AK or, you know, a gun and go and shoot a gun, you know, that doesn't, I mean, it's, 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 it's an art form in itself. And, you know, I wouldn't be able to do it. That's why I'm not there, you know, because you should leave it just, to the I would professionals. Just, I would just get killed right away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those are, you know, I would just get killed right away. You yeah, know, I'm, exactly. uh, I can't even like, I don't even know how to like, you know, clean a gun or whatever, you know, I would, I would just be dead in the first day. So that's why I think people like that, people who are artistic and, and cultural people, they have to be uh, somewhere where it's safe and they have to be inspiring people. And I see a lot of different artists that I know that are all over the place, all over Ukraine, and they're playing music and inspiring people. And I think that's that has more impact mm -hmm. rather than them, you know, taking up arms and literally just dying. Mm -hmm. So that that would be just horrible. So that's why I think everybody has their own role. You know, uh, my dad is a priest. You know, he has his own role. He mm -hmm. he is a military chaplain right now. You know, there are mm -hmm. people who are politicians. If politicians, if Zelensky would take up arms, he would get killed. If he was mm -hmm. in the front lines, he would get killed. If he gets killed, we would be screwed. You mm -hmm. know, so that's the thing. You know, if if uh, you know, we also have you know things like you know we have trains that have to be has have to be running. You know, if a train driver just goes up and gets killed you know like mm -hmm. we would the, the country would just stop so mm -hmm. that's the thing everybody has their own front line and everybody has to do all they can you know and that's why you know a lot of people are doing amazing things in here you know and uh, our country is just our, our our people are like so you know banding together you know and everybody's just helping everybody out you know and it's just uh, amazing to see the spirit so yeah. I think, you know, everybody has their own front and my front is the cultural front and the artistic front. And I'm doing all I can to do this, you know, and using all my platforms to raise money, raise awareness and lift up people's spirits. Mm -hmm. Great. So, so, so back to the original question, what would you say of music would you play for your president, Zelensky? You know, I'm really hoping that when I do meet him, it's going to be after the victory and mm -hmm. it's going to be somewhere in a very nice restaurant. And <laughs> I would just play the music that I play for everybody in here. Yeah. I would just play our Ukrainian songs that everybody knows. Mm -hmm. Nothing, you know, that nothing that is like, you know, overly patriotic or like reminding somebody of war. I think yeah. nobody really wants to think about war. I think people mm -hmm. want to feel normal again so i would play some of my favorite yeah. songs ukrainian songs you know ukraine from ukrainian bands that i grew up with you know mm. some something that is played on the radio that everybody knows that he can sing to mm. so that's what i would play for him okay so the last question so what would be the very first thing you really want to do uh once the war is over uh, definitely, I would really, really want to put on a huge concert mm -hmm. and play with a symphony orchestra, because right now this is completely impossible. Uh, they shut down all of the mass events mm -hmm. and everything that we're doing right now is kind of like on a down low. Uh, so as soon as this is over, I want to invite literally everybody that I know mm -hmm. and I want to put on a huge concert and play my best, you know, and make people happy. So name name one conductor, one, name one pianist that you would love to work with. Uh, a conductor, a conductor. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would love, I would love to work with uh, Gustavo Dudamel. Oh, that would be amazing. Okay. He is, yeah. he no. is a very- it's so much like, energy, yeah. Exactly. And that's how I, that's just how I play, you know, I'm like always like that, you know, if you see my videos. So that's why I would just love to uh, play with him. Mm. And uh, as for a pianist, uh, as for a pianist, um, I would love to maybe at some point, I know she's already old, but I would love to play with Martha Argus. Mm -hmm. I would, that would be, uh, she, is, be she is a she is she is a woman with 
yeah. strong spirit, and I just love that. So yeah. Name one orchestra too, symphony orchestra. An orchestra like. and yeah. orchestra. I would, uh, I would definitely want to play. Um, I would definitely want to play with New York Phil, obviously. <laughs> And Berlin. Who is your, and Berlin. Oh. Who, and who Berlin. is your favorite violinist? Violinist? Uh, it's really hard for me to say because I love violinists from so many different genres. You know, in classical, my idol was always David Oistra. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, also, you know, in jazz and improvising, I have a couple of really, really amazing people that I just admire so much. One of them is my also personal. I would say even friend, uh, Christian Howes. He's an amazing, amazing jazz violinist. And uh, also, obviously, Jean-Luc Ponty. He's amazing. Uh, David Garrett, obviously. <laughs> I adore him. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, I would just, I would just want for this to be over as soon as possible and for people to, you know, make art and music instead of, you know, thinking about war and destruction. Okay. Well, Thank you Great so much. I, I think thank this you. is, thank you for, you know, uh, give us this time, especially you are being in, uh, in a very difficult time here. But I just mm -hmm. want to say, uh, you know, I'm an artist as well. And I think as an artist, we are always making history and preserving the history. is also very important. And I'm so glad you're doing what you do. So good luck to you. Yeah, good luck yes. to you. Thank you so much, guys. Say yeah, hi to your, take care. Uh, to your brother and your parents for us. I definitely will. Thank you guys. Right. Thank you so Take much. Care. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.